thank you for joining today's webinar, Early Weaning in a Tough Season. My name is Jodie Rosay O'Brien and I'm one of the AWI Extension South Australian team. And tonight is co-hosted by Penny Keynes from Livestock SA. Today's webinar is supported um, by Australian Wool Innovation, the South Australian Sheep Industry Fund, the Department of Primary Industries and Regions, the Farm Resilience Program, an initiative of the Australian Government's Future Drought Fund and the Government of South Australia and Livestock SA. Um, if you want to know more about um, AWI Extension South Australia, you can go to our webpage. You can also follow us on Twitter or Facebook, and please also follow Livestock SA on their social media channels. Today's webinar is being recorded and will upload the recording to the AWI Extension South Australia YouTube channel in the coming days. And we welcome you to revisit the webinar yourself or share it with colleagues. Today's presenter is Deb Scammell from Talking Livestock. Deb is a livestock consultant um, that assists producers with nutrition and production planning in their sheep and beef enterprises. She consults directly to farmers and runs industry courses and projects. And Deb is based in the Clare Valley. Deb's also a deliverer of Australian Wool Innovations Winning with Wieners workshops. Prior to Deb starting her own business, she worked in the commercial nutrition space in several different roles covering technical, sales and national management. Deb graduated from the University of Adelaide with a Bachelor of Agricultural Science with honours in Animal Science and has studied ruminant, ruminant nutrition post-graduation. Thanks, Deb. Thanks very much, Jodie, and thanks all for coming online today. So um, I'll just kick off with, um, you know, I don't need to introduce you guys to the fact I'm sure you're all online today because it has been a really tough season with a late start. And so, you know, we're looking once ewes and lambs are already pregnant and we're locked and loaded, um, or we've got lambs and lactating ewes sort of on the ground, um, what we can do to kind of minimise feed, um, which one of our tactics in a season like this is just early weaning. Um, what I'm going to start with is just um, the weaning process, how we actually sort of wean animals. Um, we're then going to go through sort of when to wean or how early you can wean these lambs. Um, I'll talk a little bit about ewe recovery, which is some of the reasons we do look at early weaning in a season like this where we see those ewes really starting to drop condition through lactation. And I'll also just talk about some weaner feed requirements and some growth rate targets just to make sure those weaners are still going to thrive as either breeding or sales animals um, in your business later on. So when we look at, you know, you guys are all fairly aware of what you've just gone through, depending on when you're sort of lambing. So, you know, we start the breeding season. So we've got the different energy requirements here. We've got your merino singles at the bottom. So that's a 60 kilo merino ewe, the green line. Um, we've got the 60 kilo merino ewe that's pregnant with twins. So, um, and then we've also got maternal singles in the yellow and maternal twins in the orangey colour. And that's basically just showing the different requirements of energy of those animals in megajoules per day to maintain their condition over that breeding cycle. So obviously starting at maintenance um, can be quite easy to meet, but you know where most of you guys have just come through is sort of mid-pregnancy up to that lambing period. Um, and we're sort of sitting in here where we're at that real, we've just been through that peak of lactation. So what we find after lambing, sort of 30 to 40 days after lambing, you've got that huge energy requirement, which is obviously um, a lot larger in twins. So, you know, as you can see, you can sort of be up to two to two and a half times the energy requirement of what they needed as maintenance. And that's why in a year like this, where we don't have a lot of pasture on the ground, we just find ewes have serious weight loss. So what happens during lactation is they basically can't switch off that um, maternal drive to keep producing milk. So milk quality could drop slightly, but the ewe would lose considerable body fat to still keep producing milk. And that's where we're running into trouble in a season like this, where ewe's condition scores really drop to lower than what we want it to be. And then obviously once the lambs are weaned, um, we go back to that maintenance requirement again for the ewe, which allows them to pick up for the following year's joining. So when we look at when we can wean, um, you know, in a traditional system, I often talk sort of 12 to 14 weeks after the start of lambing, um, which can be a real typical weaning. But as we said, you know, it has been a tough season. Use conditions been back. You know, some people are finding lambs are really starting to 
you know, they're just not thriving on the milk of their mother. And that's when we look at potentially just an early weaning um, system. But I'll go through how we sort of determine when the best time is. So, you know, in a standard season, we basically have this general trend um, where, you know, you can see there at the start of this graph, we've basically got it two weeks of age. Um, the lamb's basically getting 100% of their energy from milk alone. And that's where when we end up, you know, if you end up with those lambs that lose their mother quite early, they do need sort of milk replacement at that point um, because they haven't really started to consume pasture. But from that point onwards, you'll see the lamb starting to consume a certain percentage from pasture or in a year like this, it's potentially more supplementary feed they're consuming with their mother. So once we get through to sort of that um, seven to eight weeks of age, um, they're likely to be consuming 50% of their energy from um, either pasture or supplementary feed. And they're only getting about 50% of their energy from milk and then it's reducing from there. So what we find with twin born lambs, they'll often have um, more percent of energy coming from pasture and supplementary feed earlier because the mother's making less milk and same in a tougher year if the ewe has, has lost most of their body fat and they're not producing enough milk, that's when your lambs will start consuming a higher percentage from pasture. But in a standard weaning around these 12 to 14 weeks, really they're only consuming about 20% of their energy from milk and that's why it's so easy to make that transition to weaning. We're in an early weaning system when we're looking at taking them off a lot earlier, um, we do need to replace that portion of energy they would have been getting from milk. So one of the most important things to sort of understand, um, and this is sort of room and development, the pictures are actually just showing in calves, but we've got exactly the same thing happening in lambs just at a slightly earlier stage. So when you look on the left here, um, we've basically got your room and development stage. Um, which is during the first few weeks of life. So when, as you saw with those lambs, when they're getting 100% of their nutrition from milk alone. So what happens with the suckling reflex is they're basically suckling the milk. Um, it's going through the esophagus there. And we've got this thing called the esophageal groove. And with the suckling effect, that actually closes off. And the animal is at that early stage acts as a monogastric animal. So they act like they've only got the one stomach. So with that esophageal groove closed, that's basically closing off the rumen. The milk's going through to the abomasum, which is where it's digested. Um, and it's not until later in life that rumen starts to sort of develop. So with a lamb around three to four weeks of age, as I said, this document, this um, charts for calves. So they're a bit later at 12 to 16 weeks of age. Basically that esophageal groove will um not close off as the animal starts to eat pasture or supplementary feed and the feed will start to go through the four stomachs and the rumen system and then as the rumen develops and becomes mature the rumen will start to get larger and you'll have your fermentation sort of um, normal digestion through the rumen which is what they then are for the rest of their life. So when we look at that weaning age, um, as that's only sort of occurring at three to four weeks, if they're weaned prior to that, they will need sort of milk replaces, where from that point on, we can get the room and to sort of act and start digesting feed in a normal way. So, you know, the other consideration when we look at um, when we're likely to wean is the actual weight of the weaners. So this is um, a trial that was done in central New South Wales and there was also um, a site in South Australia, which is a black line here, which was done at Struan. So what we're looking at with this graph is the percentage of standard reference weight. So hopefully anyone that's done lifetime U will have a standard reference weight that they sort of know for their use. But if you haven't, standard reference weight is basically the weight of a um, your mature ewe. So it's basically a non-pregnant ewe with no fleece in condition score three. Um, and we, when we get an average mature weight of our flock, that's what we call our standard reference weight. So when we look at ideal weaning time in a standard year, um, our target is about 45% of the standard reference weight. So 45% body weight of the weaner of the standard sort of weight of the mature ewes in your flock. And the reason we look at that standard reference weight percentage at 45 is it basically will reduce your risk of weaner mortality. 
So this black line here, which was the South Australian site, um, they basically had massive worm burdens um, post weaning within the trial. So that's why um, mortality is so much higher there. So if you look at the standard trend of weaners, what you can see is that at that 45% of standard reference weight, basically the weaner mortality through to one year is quite low. And as the weaners start to get lighter, um, you know, you can see there around 20% of standard reference weight, the mortality really starts to rise. And once you're at 10% of standard reference weight, so, you know, if you imagine um, a 70 kilo mature weight U, 10% of standard reference weight is going to be a seven kilo weaner lamb. You can see that central tablelands data, we're trending up towards 50% mortality. So we obviously want to avoid that. So, you know, the rumen starting to, to develop at that three to four weeks, um, but the weight is also going to have an impact on the result of that early weaning. But, um, you know, there is some positives out of this. So if we know in a tough season like this, unfortunately, we're not going to get those weaners through to that 40 or even 45% of standard reference weight. So, you know, we know in a year like this, we need to compromise and we're potentially going to be weaning lambs at a lighter weight. So within these weaners that were in that previous trial that was done in um, New South Wales, Basically, they've split them into four groups of weaners. So you can see here some of the examples. So, you know, a mid weaning weight, 23.9 kilos. And then we look at post weaning growth rate. So how much the animals grow for the four weeks sort of post weaning. Um, and you can see that top group have grown at sort of 62.9 grams per weaner per day. Um, and they were at 0.8% mortality. So they were weaned at a reasonable weight growing, you know, a fairly moderate rate, definitely not fast. And then you see group two, um, they were weaned at a lighter weight. So they were weaned at 18, just over 18 kilos. So, you know, over five kilos lighter than the top group. But what we've done is they've been fed to grow basically twice as quickly. So hundred, nearly 136 grams per weaner per day. And you can see the mortality of that group um, was zero. And then, you know, in contrast to that, we've got some other weaners in there, group four, that are growing at, weaned at 17, just over 17 kilos, growing at just a moderate rate again of 60, nearly 66 grams per day. Um, and their mortality then gone up to 7.6%. And then, you know, group three, we've got relatively heavy weaners that have lost weight post weaning. Um, and their mortality is the highest out of the lot at over 11% mortality. So I guess what we're looking at in this data is basically if we know we're weaning at a lighter than ideal weight, so we might be 30 or 35% of standard reference weight, we can actually compensate for this um, by reducing mortality by really pushing those post weaning growth rates. So I'll be going through that a little bit in the nutrition section of just meeting requirements and making sure we're getting them quickly out of that mortality zone. And what I generally focus on, so say we've weaned them at, you know, 15 or 20 kilos, um, I'll basically push them at quite a fast post weaning growth rate until you get past that risk period, which is the 45% of standard reference weight, which was your initial sort of weaning target. So, you know, the I guess the other thing we talk about in a tough season like this is you recovery. So, you know, I guess this year has been tough. I've found plenty of clients have sort of come into lambing probably a little bit behind the eight ball. Ewes probably weren't quite at their standard condition score targets. But then, you know, with the lack of feed in paddocks and, you know, trying to ration out supplement or access more barley or protein as we can, I've just found ewes have really dropped a lot of condition through that lactation sort of phase. So, you know, at the top here, we've got our standard sort of six-week joining or, you know, I often encourage five-week joining. You've got your standard 21 weeks of pregnancy. So with a normal weaning time of 14 weeks after the start of lambing, that gives you use 17 weeks recovery time, which, you know, if they've dropped to their normal, say, two and a half score over lactation, that generally gives you plenty of time to pick them up for joining the following year. But what we've seen this year is use dropping significantly. So, 
you know, potentially even lower than that. And then we've also, you know, we don't have the paddock feed to start picking them up now. So, you know, we're looking at if we can wean even four weeks earlier, it's just going to give our ewes an extra four weeks to basically recover for the following year's joining. So, you know, when we look at um, lifetime wool data, basically any extra condition score you put on a ewe at joining will give you the potential of 20 extra lambs per 100 ewes for that following year's joining. So, you know, I guess what I'm saying to people this season is we know we've had a tough season. You know, we've got the lambs on the ground, but, you know, we don't want to then go into next joining behind the eight ball again. So if we can look after lambs and use separately, it gives us the best opportunity to still have a successful joining um, in the following sort of breeding season. And obviously the bottom example in a, you know, if you're weaning really late, so you're leaving them on for 20 weeks, it really does cut that recovery time. But yeah, this year we're probably looking at, you know, potentially going under 14 weeks just to increase that recovery time because we know the ewes have had a sort of tough run through lactation. So, you know, I guess the other thing we need to look at with your ewes is I'm finding just a huge spread of condition score. So in a lot of cases, ewes were heavily supplemented into lambing and over lactation. Um, and what we've found is we've got these, you know, potentially single bearing ewes that are a bit, you know, half a condition score up. And then any sort of twins or triplets have really struggled through that lactation period. So, you know, I really encourage you guys do a condition score at lamb marking and that can help you make a decision on when you should be weaning. So if the ewes are in adequate condition score, you potentially can just do a standard weaning. But if they are starting to struggle, it may be looking at early weaning or also just drafting ewes up, um, you know, once you've weaned based on condition score, just so you can really look after those skinny so they're not impacted the following joining. And as I said, it's often your um, twins and triplets. So they you do want to look after them because they've actually often done quite a good job for you over that breeding season and they have put everything into their lamb. So, you know, what we look at, and this figure varies a little bit depending on sort of lamb size and the growth rate you're pushing and also whether you're trying to build use up or whether you're just maintaining but when we look at sort of a standard system where we're just maintaining ewes or, um, you know, slowly putting condition score back on post weaning and then feeding quite young weaner lambs separately, you know, it can be up to 30% reduction in feed requirement. And that's because the sort of metabolic conversion from milk to um, energy for a lamb um, isn't as effective as them basically consuming feed and turning it into sort of meat and muscle and growth themselves. So, um, what we find is, you know, it obviously drops that maintenance figure back to the ewe that you can just put them back on their 10 meg per day for maintenance. And then, you know, due to the sheer difference in body weight for the lamb, we can put all of our better quality feed into them at a lower weight and their actual intakes go down substantially compared to the ewe and lamb unit. So that's why we look at in a tough season doing that weaning at, you know, sort of around that eight weeks of age. So I'll go through just the actual weaning process. So one of the important things is um, really to manage that stress over weaning. And this is in a normal weaning situation, not just an early weaning. But I think because of the sheer body weight being sm like lower on those early weaned animals, we really need to make sure, as I said, that they're growing quicker. So letting stress take over can really mean that, that those first, you know, four or five days of weight loss due to stress can be really detrimental as far as weaner mortality. So what we look at with stress, you know, often if, you know, the lambs move to a new paddock, they've suddenly been trail fed or they've suddenly had a feeder thrown at them. They haven't seen one before. They've got a different water source. Everything's changed and their mum's been taken away. What will happen is their um, appetite will start to decrease. So their appetite drops, they eat less. Um, nutrient absorption will also go down. So their rumen won't act as effectively. Um, so even though they're not eating, you know, they're eating less, also they're absorbing less nutrients, their system's not working properly. Um, often they'll sort of urinate and, you know, have a bit of diarrhea because they're a bit stressed, so they'll dehydrate quickly. And what we then see is that immune suppression. 
So what we see with light weaners that, you know, are going through a bit of a stress response post weaning, um, basically, you know, it can be pneumonia, it can be any sort of health issue, your worm burdens will go up quickly because they just don't have the immune system to fight off those normal sort of health issues. So we really need to make sure that weaner lambs, we can make the weaning phase as stress-free as possible. And it could be a yard weaning type setup, but one of my biggest pieces of advice is basically to avoid um, neophobia. So it's basically just introducing them to whatever they're going to be on, um, with their mother because their mother will basically train them um, to accept anything. So no different to a mother and a child, um, you know, you teach them how to cross the road, you show them, um, you know, what's safe to eat, what's safe to touch. And it's the same with the lamb. They'll sort of, for the rest of their life, presume that's safe. But I'll go back to that with some examples in a sec. But yeah, on to the immune suppression um, I guess I just wanted to touch on some of the most common health problems I see with sort of weaning in general, not necessarily early weaning and the things to avoid. Um, so, you know, pulpy kidney is basically that change of feed type. So, you know, if we've had them on feed with their their mother um, and then we've introduced them to different feed or we're going to start building up their nutrition, um, we just need to make sure they've had a standard sort of vaccination, a three-in-one or six-in-one or seven in one within um, sort of three months of them being weaned. So, you know, generally they'll have their marking dose. And then if you do give them their booster at weaning, that'll cover them quite well for pulpy kidney. But just remembering you only do get three months coverage. So, you know, after three months, if you still got them on quite high nutrition or you're going to move them back to suddenly a lush pasture, just making sure they're always covered for pulpy kidney. Um, acidosis, we just need to watch with starch introduction. So in an ideal world, they would have been well introduced to starch with their mother. And then the other one, as I said, um, worm management. So because their immunity drops so much over that weaning process, we just need to make sure that where we can, we move them onto clean weaner pastures. This is difficult this year because a lot of the sign feeds haven't come up. So I understand that. But generally doing an egg count on the lambs prior to weaning, drenching with an effective drench if need be. And, you know, if you do need to move them to a paddock that's less than ideal as far as clean, really monitoring those um, worm egg counts post weaning to make sure that's not going to affect growth rate and mortality as well. So, you know, back to um, neophobia. So this trial um, also done in New South Wales back in 2008. So, Basically, we're just looking at pre-weaning exposure to a feed type. So all of these groups of lambs, there was three different groups of lambs, the control, the ground fed and the trough fed. So they're only given two, 200 grams of barley per ewe and lamb unit. So only twice prior to weaning. And the black group there, they were given no access to grain at all. So they weren't fed grain at all pre-weaning. Um, the ground group, which is the lighter grey, they were given the two 200 gram feeds, just trail fed on the ground. And the trough group were given the two 200 grams of feed with their mother in troughs pre-weaning. And then all of these groups were given grain as like post-weaning with their um, inner trough. So basically the trough group pre-weaning were already pre-introduced to the grain, but also introduced to the feeding method they were going to go on post weaning control group weren't introduced to anything and the ground group had seen grain but not in the trough that they were going to go on to be fed in so as you can see you know day one we've got nearly 70 percent of that control group that were shy feeders so they didn't come over to the trough or the grain um, we've got under 30 percent of the ones that were introduced to the grain on the ground and we've got just over 10% of the mob that were introduced to the trough pre-weaning. And then, you know, day two, um, a significant reduction in all of the groups, um, but the control, you know, is still quite high at sort of 15% that didn't go over to the grain or trough at all. And then, you know, by day six, seven, um, you can see most of the animals are onto the trough and the grain. 
But as I said, when we're early weaning and they're light um, and we don't have much else to feed them, those two days um, or even the first day that they haven't gone on to that high energy feed can be quite detrimental to sort of weaning mortality stress and also, um, you know, growth rates within those first two to three days. So what we're looking at is basically introducing them not just to the feed type, but hopefully you can also introduce them to the feeding method. They're going to go on post weaning. So, you know, some photos here kindly provided by Jody. Um, just of, you know, we've got the little lambs on the left there, you can see. So, you know, lambs will hose straight into those feeders. And I guess really the key of this, this message is potentially not for this year because I'm presuming a lot of your lambs are already onto the feeders or troughs or trail feed because out of necessity, you've been feeding those ewes over lactation. But the thing I want you to take from a tough year is in a normal year, we actually still want these animals introduced onto these feeding methods and feed types um, just because it makes it so much easier later in life. And the photo on the right, you can see, you know, those lambs have gone over to the loose lick drums with their mum and you can see them there. They're quite happy to accept the loose lick drum and the grain then. So post weaning, that's going to take a lot of stress, you know, especially if you do need to yard wean, those mums are taken out and those lambs are used to the feeder, the loose lick and the water. Um, and they're used to the pen. They've got a bit of social structure already organised. So, you know, as I said this isn't one that we really need to talk too much about this year because I feel like most of you guys have just imprint fed because I've needed the grain or hay. Um, but what we look at with imprint feeding in a normal season, we look at just giving that starch based feed. So it can be your full feed pellets that are high in starch or your barley or your oats um, or small percentages of wheat, whatever you've got access to. And we look at, you know, in a normal year, I just try and, um, teach the lambs with their mothers you know at least three times prior to weaning um, as you saw you know within a couple of days it made a difference in that other data I just put up and then you know if you're weaning on to lush pasture in a good year it's worth still giving them access to that starch based feed three times after weaning as well and the reason we do this as well which is you know why I find often in a tough year we're worried about pulling these lambs off early but what we actually get is this improved rumen development. So on the left, we've got a rumen um, that's basically only been exposed. So that's the rumen wall of an animal that's only been exposed to milk. So, you know, that lamb at two to three weeks of age, that's what they're all going to look like. And then once we start introducing, the middle one is some hay being introduced. So, you know, not overly starchy, a bit of fibre. So what the picture is showing is the papillae sort of on the room and wall. So with hay exposure alone, you're going to get that improved papillae and surface area of the rumen. And then on the right, um, we've got a room and wall that's been exposed to starch as it's developing. So starch based feeds. And as you can see, you've got that massive difference in surface area over the room and wall. So that's giving you better feed efficiency, um, better nutrient absorption, and that really sets that weaner up for sort of effective rumen function um, post weaning. So, you know, it's something that's happened if you have supplementary fed prior to weaning. You have small animals, but they're really well set up for rumen function. But yeah, remember all of this in a, in a good year that we can still have those advantages, especially if you're going to finish lambs in feedlots kind of later in life. So, you know, I, I guess when we're weaning early, I really want you guys to think of what your post weaning growth rate targets are. And as I said, it's really to reduce that mortality percent. So this has come, um, data's come with from the Winning with Wieners course, which is a half day course. As Jody said in the intro, um, myself and many others are trained to deliver that. And, you know, realistically, it might be a good year for us to be delivering these just because it does help you set up for success with sort of post weaning growth rate targets and um, setting targets and then working out nutritionally how we're going to achieve them. So as I said, you know, this is a standard weaner at 45% of standard reference weight with different growth rates post weaning and what the effect is on mot on mortality. So when you're weaning a weaner at a standard wa rate, um, weight, sorry, 
I want their growth rate target over 50 grams per head per day. So that's the absolute minimum to reduce that mortality. You can see as it, it goes up as we drop the weight. But as you, as I said earlier, we really want, if they're weaned a lot less than 45% of standard reference weight, we really want to push that growth rate faster again. So, you know, those examples we said, they were going at, you know, 120 to 130 grams per day, not the minimum of 50 grams per head per day. And you can see that has a huge effect on reducing the mortality percent of even those standard weighted weaners. So, you know, I've put up some standard sort of um, targets. So in the top right in that table, I've basically got, you know, based on your standard reference weight, which we've got a 60 kilo animal here, um, basically your birth weight targets generally around eight to 9% of that standard reference weight. So this animal, we're going to be sort of five kilo birth weight. Um, your standard 45% is going to be a 27 kilo weaner. And, you know, standard joining, whether it's a, as a hogger or a ewe lamb, we're going to go at least a minimum of 80% of standard reference weight. So that would give us 48 kilos. And obviously those targets are a bit higher um, as the standard reference weight gets higher. So you can use those percentages to work out for your own um, mature weight, standard reference weight of a ewe to work out what your targets are. And then, you know, in the bottom left, all I've done is work out based on adult adult weight, what sort of growth targets we need per head per day. So, you know, for a standard weaning um, at 14 weeks, we're going to, if we're going to hit those 45% of standard reference weight, we need them to grow at 265 grams per day. So, you know, as I said, if you've weaned a lot lighter this year, we're going to try and push them at those high growth rates until they get up to that 45% of standard reference weight. And then, you know, in the second column there, if you're just doing a standard hogget joining, you can actually then slow up and just grow them at 50 grams per day. But if you're going to join as ewe lambs or their sale animals, then you might have a higher target. So, you know, a sale animal post weaning, I'm going to be more targeting that 250 to 350 grams per day. So depending on what your end game is, you know, in a tough year like this, we might be just trying to get 35 kilos so we can get rid of them as stores. But, you know, potentially we might draft off our ewe lamb replacements and our weather lamb separately um, or any, you know, maternal sale animals um, that are just going to be sold um, where your replacements, you can slow down the growth rate, save a bit of feed. And once I've got over that 45% of standard reference weight, we can slow their growth up to sort of that 50 grams per day if we need to. So I guess just working out a growth um, target, a weight target and a growth rate for each sort of class of animal can help you work out, you know, who you need to prioritise to put weight on the quickest. So, you know, I guess this... Um, slide really is just to reassure you um, don't be afraid of containment weaning if we need to so uh, you know I'm seeing a lot of areas now you know there's some real small germination or really short um, sort of perennial pastures or um, permanent pastures a lot of the sign feed you know has barely broken ground so you know what we're looking at if weaning's coming up in three weeks there's, we can really safely wean animals into a yard, especially if they've been introduced. We can avoid the neophobia I just spoke about. You know, their mums made them quite familiar with that. And, you know, it can just give us the ability to hold the lambs for that extra sort of three to four weeks just to allow the pasture to get ahead of them. So the problem in a year like this, if we put them on that, you know, very short sown cereals and things, for example, you know, that plant really is often under 10% dry matter and it's, you know, 90, 95% water. So, you know, often your weaner lambs will go backwards on that versus just holding them on good quality supplementary feed if you've hopefully still got access to it um, in a pen, giving them what they need and then putting them out on that pasture when it's at slightly more mature sort of stage. But yeah, get advice if you're not sure of that, but it can definitely be done. Um, and obviously making sure we avoid some of those health issues I touched on earlier. So I'll just finish up with sort of nutritional requirements of these weaners and just a bit of an example of how we can meet their sort of daily requirements. 
So I just wanted to point out first, um, you know, the top of that triangle, really this year, I'm seeing so many people query sort of mineral issues or what's going on with growth rates. And the thing I've found is realistically, it's just feed that we're needing in most cases. So um, it is just that energy um, that I touched on before, sort of measured in megajoules per kilo of the feed. Um, the protein of the feed, which is what sort of helps with meat and muscle development, which we'll talk about a little bit with your wieners. And then NDF is just the neutral detergent fiber. Um, so basically that's how we measure the fiber in a ration. And as NDF goes up, um, basically as feed matures, it gets more fibrous and that will basically reduce the intake of um, that an animal can have at that ration. So we want a minimum fibre level to help that rumen to function effectively. But if we start to go really high in fibre like straw, basically the animals won't be able to intake enough to get adequate energy and protein out of it. So I'll touch on the basics, but if you're not sure on nutrition, it can be worth reaching out and just getting someone to do up sort of a simple um, weaner ration for you to make sure you're hitting targets. And then, you know, in a dry season, there are some vitamins um, we need to concentrate on just because if they've been supplementary fed for longer than three months, we can start to see some deficiencies and things like calcium are also crucial um, just when we're grain feeding, just to make sure our calcium phosphorus ratio is right to make sure we still have growth. But in general, I want you guys to make sure you tick off the energy, protein and fibre of your ration first. So, you know, something I always talk about is just making sure if you can that you feed test your ingredients. So um, your feed test is around $60 um, per test, depending on who you go with. Um, and it'll just give you the breakdown of what's actually in that feed type so we can work out if it's going to hit your targets. So the feed test I've put up is of a 23 hay. And you can see the protein's quite good at 11%. Um, energy is pretty good at the bottom, the metabolizable energy at just under 10 megs per kilo. Um, and neutral detergent fibre there just under 60%. So, you know, what we find with 22 hay, neutral detergent fibre was more like high 60s, even into low 70s, which is similar to your straw. And as I said, that would reduce intake, but also the energy was a lot lower. So in some cases, you're not going to be able to meet um, weaner requirements with that lower quality hay. But yeah, by getting a feed test, we can basically tick off if it's going to meet requirements. And then, you know, we look at the old um, example of what is limiting growth rate. So as I said, we've got all of those things I just showed you in the triangle um, that are critical for growth rate. And one of the most common things with young animals is protein to be limiting your growth rate. So, you know, I think with you production, um, especially people that have done lifetime you management course, we get really used to talking about energy requirements and what they need and how that sort of drives condition score. But with a weaner, because they're putting on that meat and muscle, especially if we are weaning them early at that sort of, you know, 15 to 20 kilos, we do need to ensure we've got adequate protein. So often we look at, we've thrown plenty of energy at them, but as you can see on that chart, even if we're up at that 13, 14 energy per kilo dry matter you're feeding, if you're under 10% protein, um, which, you know, with a barley cereal high ration, you potentially are only going to be at about 10% protein overall it really is that protein that will limit growth rate and you're never going to get them to grow more than that 50 grams per day. So what we look at on this chart also from winning with wieners, the orange lines, if you're trying to achieve 50 grams per day, as I said, at, with a lighter wiener, I'm more comfortable with 100 to 150 grams or even higher in growth rate. So you can see you're really needing that high spec ration and at lighter weaning weights, um, we often need 15, 16, um, you know, even up to 18% protein, depending on what the weaner weight actually was. So as they get lighter, they actually need a lot higher protein percent just to meet those early um, growth targets that we talked about. 
So, you know, in general with early weaning, um, as I said, often depending on weight. Um, so when you're looking at weaning sort of under that 45% of standard reference weight, you're going to need more than 15% protein in the overall ration. And, you know, it is a really tough year. Um, you know, I'm, I'm struggling to do rations for people that can't access protein. Um, what we look at in a standard year is lupins, beans, peas, your lentils, um, vetch, hay, loosen. You know, they can all be good ways of supplying protein. And I totally understand this year that it's getting um, really hard to access any of those things if you don't already have them on farm. Um, energy target, you know, generally over 10 megajoules per kilo. And as you saw on the previous chart for higher rates, we're going to try and go a little bit higher if we're pushing growth rates a bit. And then, you know, my general target for rumen function, especially for long-term feeding, is that um, NDF neutral detergent fibre level of the ration. Ideally, it's sort of 30% plus can be good. Short-term feeding can go slightly under. Um, but yeah, for health reasons, I prefer fibre level to be up if you're going to feed weaners on supplement for a long period of time. So I've just got a bit of an example to step through. Um, but yeah, it really depends on um, feed tests of individual ingredients, as I said. So the best way to do a um, ration is to get your feed tests um, done. And then there's a few tools I'll step you through that can sort of help you with simple rations. Or if you're really not sure on nutrition, um, it can be worth just getting a quick ration done up by someone experienced just to make sure you're hitting those growth targets you need to avoid mortality and turn those lambs into sort of successful breeding or sale animals in the end. So, you know, I've got here an example of a 25 kilo sort of early weaned lamb weaner. Um, so, you know, their requirement is 16% protein and 11 megajoules per energy in their ration. Um, so, you know, using some average standard sort of feed tests, um, I can basically meet that requirement using half a kilo of barley and half a kilo of loosened hay. So as I said, the sheer body weight um, of those animals only being 25 kilos, you know, I'm sure some of you guys have been pumping huge amounts of barley into use to feed lambs. So what we look at with the weaners themselves if, is we're suddenly back to sort of only that one kilo of dry, um, as fed feed intake per day. So, you know, what I generally do is then cost out that ration um, because, you know, with all of this, it's important to have some concept of what we're spending to kind of hit these higher growth rates. So, you know, the barley portion is 15 cents um, per weaner per day and the loose and hay is going to be 23 cents. So that's going to give you a total cost of 38 cents per lamb per day. And then, you know, I think a year when we all realise the importance of feed budgeting. So um, you know, I guess those that feed budgeted well in January, um, often we go through to end of June. Unfortunately, we're still running out of feed. Um, but yeah, for those that only did a feed budget through to March or April, um, you know, probably have substantially run out of feed. So I sort of encourage you guys, if you didn't do a feed budget for your lambing use, it is still worth timesing it out for your number of wean lambs because it just gives you some idea of whether there's a shortfall and you know, it's very hard to find pellets or barley now, but I think give it another two or three weeks and it's going to be harder again. So I guess doing your feed budget gives you that plan and allows you to try and access extra feed early or look at alternatives if you need to. So looking at sort of 2,000 wean lambs, I'm doing feed budgets for around 45 days now in the areas that have had rain, just, you know, knowing it is that growth time we've got to wait for, especially now that it's cold. Um, before it's going to sort of meet requirements that they can go out into paddocks. So, you know, we're looking at there, that's a tonne of barley and a tonne of loose and hay per day to feed those 2,000 weaned lambs. Um, but over the 45 days, we're going to need 45 tonne of barley and 45 tonne of loose and hay to meet their requirements. So, you know, that gives us some idea of what we need on hand and I guess an early plan of what to do if we don't have enough of that on hand. At least we can work out an alternative. And, you know, as I said, that's generic advice based on sort of um, the feed tests I use as examples. But, yeah, best to work out exactly meeting your own protein and energy requirements of your own feed. So in summary, we've covered a fair bit of ground. Um, 
So, yeah, I guess weaning time. I've sort of talked about a few different targets as far as weight of lambs, um, but also that critical sort of rumen development that happens at three to four weeks. Um, so, you know, in general, there's no problem with weaning a six to eight week old lamb, um, just depending on your spread of um, lambing time. So how long you're lambing over, you know, I've also got people that will do sort of a two part weaning. So we'll take, you know, say eight to 10 week old lambs. And then, you know, if they have lambed over six or seven weeks, you often then need to come back and get the lower portion because we don't want to be um, weaning lambs at three weeks unless we put them on milk replacers and um, really specialised diets. So we want that rumen to be developed and we also want them to be, um, you know, able to function and above sort of minimum weights that we're going to have mass mortality post weaning. The next thing there is planning. So, you know, I guess I've spoken to a lot of people over the last few weeks that are going to wean in two weeks and it does really give us that opportunity to introduce the young animals to the feeding type, feeding method, water, everything else to avoid that stress over weaning. And I guess, you know, imprint feeding, as I said, it's a bit out the window this year because we've done it anyway. But remember how it worked for you guys and, you know, how your weaners do do on grain and hay afterwards. And hopefully it's a tool we can use forward in a good season. And then monitor weight gain, but also having your target. So I think having those growth targets that you're aiming for and regularly weighing um, and also monitoring things like egg counts in your weaners will just help you not waste that feed. And, you know, you can refine nutrition or drop nutrition down on replacement breeders um, if you need to later, once they're just ticking along and out of those mortality sort of risk periods. And yeah, I guess in general feeding for growth, especially if you have weaned way below those 45% of standard reference weight targets. So we do really need to push them out of the risk period and then we can back off after that period once I've hit those real sort of minimum targets. But yeah, a few, I'll take some questions now, but just a few, um, as I said, AWI is winning with weaners. There was some information I presented throughout. It's a great course in a year like this where we potentially do have lower than standard weaning targets and we want to make sure we're meeting sort of minimum growth targets um, but they also have some really good energy and protein table targets for weaner animals at various weights so um, you can access that on the AWI site. Um, Sheep Connect or sorry Jody, AWI Extension SA I think it's called now um, but on that website um, that Jody looks after there's some really good information. We've done previous webinars on sort of nutrition for growth, feed budgeting. Um, I've done sort of a short 10 minute video on reading a feed test. So that was a real quick run through. If you want some more information about what you need to look at on your feed test, that'll go through that in 10 minutes. And there's some really good resources on weaning as well. Um, and then the other thing I use heavily in a year like this is the New South Wales DPI drought and supplementary feeding calculator um, so you can look at it on your computer or on an app on your phone or ipad um, it'll basically just help you compare costs of ingredients on energy or protein so you can work out sort of the best ingredients to feed at the best value um, and you can also just do a simple ration so you will be able to do a ration for sort of for a light wiener lamb and hit various energy and protein targets just looking at fiber sources and um and legumes and grain or whatever you've got on hand or you can compare say for a weaner the cost of a full feed pellet versus making up your own grain mix depending on what you've got left sort of available to you but yeah that will help and yeah um hopefully we can email that out to all the registered participants but yeah i'll hand back to jody to take over for any questions no worries. Um, thanks, Deb. So the first one, Deb, and I think we you summed it up at the end, but just to reinforce, is it worth leaving the lighter lambs with their mums at weaning? Yeah, so I did just touch on that. Yep. Um, so I think realistically, if you do have those lighter, younger lambs, I think in a year like this, I've got no problem with doing that two-part weaning. So um, yeah, just grabbing off anything heavy, you know, often we'll have a minimum target of um, 20 kilos or whatever. Um and then, yeah, and then anything under might stay on for an extra two weeks and then we come back and grab them afterwards. Uh, yeah, so Deb, there was a photo of some ewes and lambs in containment. Um, how many, like, is that a good idea? And how many per pen would you consider? Um, yes. 
Yep. So, um, yeah, and it probably goes back to some of the containment setups. We actually did do a very good webinar on that a few months ago um, if you need to revisit that. But, yeah, I don't have too much of a problem putting ewes and lambs in containment. It's obviously just meeting their nutritional requirements. Um, when you come down to mob size, once I've mothered up well, you know, once they're past that critical sort of 48 hours, I'm not too fussed about the mismothering, but feeder space is really crucial. So you go back to sort of your, you know, ideally 100 ewes per self feeder and, you know, 35 centimetres single-sided roughly, depending on ewe size per ewe. So, yeah, just really making sure they've got adequate feeder space is critical. And, you know, in saying mob size doesn't matter, I really like that two to 300 ewes in a pen. I wouldn't want to put a 1,000 ewes in a small pen. So, you know, you'd want to go for your um, look at your pen size as well. But, yeah, that's covered quite well in some in some containment information we've already put out. Yep. So looking for the information, jump on the um... – AWI Extension SA YouTube channel and those webinars are there that we recorded one about setting up containment and the other one about nutrition in containment so yep jump on there and have a look and there's also a health webinar on there with Colin as well that's worth looking at for containment. Next question Deb is you talked in the presentation about growth rates and mortalities in merinos would what would be the comparative growth rate targets for composites? Yep. So when you get to those lower mortality levels, um, there was a separate trial done for composites, which I'm um, happy to take details and sort of send through the papers. But the um, the mortality risk is relatively similar once you start stepping down to that standard reference weight percentage. Um, so the composites didn't change substantially once you went down in um, lighter weaning weights. And then um, the minimum growth targets were quite similar too. So there is a separate sort of project that was done looking at that just because we do base a lot of our wiener information on merinos just because of how successful that lifetime wool research was done kind of early, I guess, in the sheep industry. But yeah, um, generally with composites, you know, I'd be looking at the same thing, like really keeping away from that 50 grams and at those lighter weights, you're going to be pushing them a lot heavier than that. But yeah, happy to find that and send it through if um, you want to send me an email. Thanks, Deb. Uh, another one here. We're about to start lambing uh, in two weeks and we'll be potentially weaning into a vetch forage crop. What's the risk of bloat or how much is the risk of bloat? Yeah, so, I mean, bloat depends a bit on sort of crop stage. Um, but, yeah, any sort of, you know, when you're on those clover-dominant vetch, um, like very digestible feeds um, with high protein, bloat is always a risk. So I guess, um, you know, really making sure you've done that starch introduction with their mother, make sure they're happy to go onto a feeder. Um, and then also fibre can often help reduce bloat risk as well. So, yeah, often on those real rich feeds, especially if the lambs have been on sort of supplementary feed or different feed type with their mother, you know, I try and make sure their weaners are definitely onto that grain, um, you know, potentially oats or something a bit more fibrous in the feeder as well. Um, and, you know, make sure they've also got access and they're consuming that. And then, you know, there are bloat products and things you could put out in licks as well if you're really worried. But, yeah, I've found generally with fibre and a bit of starch, you can have quite a good result on veg. Um, and, yeah, we definitely run into trouble when it is that neophobia and we suddenly put out the feeder because we think we should have, but we haven't, um, you know, introduced them properly with their mother. So it takes them three weeks to go on to it. And that's where we have that real issue with feed change. Uh, cool. Thanks, Deb. Um Next question, scabby mouth risk, uh, all licking the same feeders. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so definitely a risk. And as I said, especially with young um, weaned animals that have had, a, you know, I think our immunity is always checked over weaning. So, yeah, it can be worth sort of scratching them for scabby mouth um, when you know they're going to go into sort of a dry, dusty environment. And, um, yeah, potentially it'll spread very quickly in that containment type weaning situation. So, yeah, could be worth making sure you're covered for that. Thanks. Um, um, are six to eight week lambs capable of eating lupins in their grain mix uh, as they can be very hard to chew? 
Yeah, so I haven't had too much trouble with young lambs eating lupins, but I think it really is that introduction thing as well. So, you know, even in a feedlot, I find animals that have been fed a lot of barley over their lifetime and come in at, say, 40 kilos will often pick out lupins. So, yeah, I think, you know, realistically their teeth are capable of grinding um, quite early, but I think often it is if we, you know, post weaning suddenly go, oh man, we need lupins in because Deb said we need protein. Um, they'll often just go to the barley because they've had plenty of it with their mums and they'll just start flicking out the lupins. So, you know, it is again, just even if you only introduce it a week prior to weaning, just getting them on that grain, getting them used to it before you've weaned them. Um, how soon after weaning can we shear the ewes? Will they go uh, they will go on to reasonable feed afterwards. So what's your thoughts on that, Deb? Yeah, so it probably depends a bit on condition score as well. Um, but, yeah, there's no problem with shearing ewes straight after weaning. Um, but, yeah, if they really have dropped condition um, and, you know, are likely to go down with stress-related issues, then, you know, you're potentially better off just giving them that bit of time on so like slightly above maintenance feed just to pick up a bit of condition and a bit of strength before you go through shearing. But yeah, provided they're in adequate condition score, I wouldn't have too much of an issue with shearing them straight away. Um, and yeah, obviously, you know, often post shearing and on better feed, they're likely to pick up pretty well as well. We have lupins and barley for our weaned lambs, haven't got hay. Is the lupins and barley enough or do we have to buy hay uh, um, if... Uh, and if so, what sort of hay? Yeah, so, um, yeah, as I sort of said with the top of the triangle, like lupins and barley are spot on for your um, protein from your lupins and, you know, starch-based energy, great in the barley. Um, but realistically, the NDF level is very low on those two grains. So, you know, your overall ration will only be sort of 15% um, fibre with grain only. So I really would want some hay incorporated. Um, unless you've got some dry paddock feed, you know, we potentially can get away if you've got good levels of standing dry feed in paddocks. They'll often get a bit of um, fibre from that and we'll be able to just feed them grain only. Um, you know, in an ideal world, you'd buy 2023 good quality cereal hay. But, um, you know, I think realistically it is so hard to get hay at the moment. So, even if you ended up having to buy 22 or older hay, just making sure it's not mouldy for weaners. Um, and then, you know, we'd probably adjust the proportion of lupins and barley depending on the quality of hay you are able to access. So, yeah, this is really hard year as far as perfect nutrition. It's pretty much making use of what we can get. So I'd probably go out and source some hay. And even if it's straw, we'd up the lupins and barley and just put a real minimum of fibre from something like straw if that's all we could get. Thanks, Deb. What's the minimum time between lamb marking and early weaning in weeks? Yep. So, um, yeah, the hard part is, you know, probably in a standard season, I'd work on around four weeks. Um, but realistically, it does depend a little bit on if you're musing um, and how those wounds are sort of healing. So, you know, in an ideal world, we wouldn't wean without healed um, musing wounds or, you know, have tails healed up um you know and nothing that's going to create I guess health issues but you know I guess this year potentially seeing the writing on the wall I've had some people just marking slightly earlier and then provided all wounds are healed up um then we're yeah we're early weaning if we have to and as I said it's not an ideal year um for doing anything by the book so you know, I guess I've had cases where we're potentially weaning slightly earlier than we might like after marking, but when we're running out of feed to feed ewes, they're dropping in condition and not um, and lambs aren't being fed properly anyway. I've had a better response by taking the lambs off and, and feeding them for good growth rates and, yeah, haven't had too many issues. But it's probably just regular monitoring, um, yeah, if you are doing that too quickly. But, yeah, I guess in a standard year, I'd always say four weeks. Cool, thanks. Deb, great answer. Um, can I use wheat? This is just one of the questions here. Yeah, so um, I did. I haven't talked too much about starch just because we've got so much um, to cover in this amount of time. But 
basically wheat is just high, very high starch compared to your barley um, and then your oats are safer again. So, yeah, I mean, if wheat's all you've got left, we can use wheat, but it just needs a lot more starch management in like management introducing it to animals just because that risk of acidosis and also I'd more likely put in buffers and things just to yeah reduce that risk again of the rumen sort of pH diving and the health issues associated with that. So, you know, in general, my preference is sort of 20 to 30% wheat mixed with barley or oats, but once again this year, I've had some people feeding nearly all wheat and we've made it work because we don't have any other options of grain. So, yeah, I guess if you haven't fed wheat before, I'd just encourage you to get some advice before you wean on just wheat. One last question I've got here, Deb, is thoughts on weaning prior to marking and marking later post weaning? Um, I haven't actually really thought about doing that. Um, I guess, you know, a lot of the advice around marking is to do it under 20 under 12 weeks um and yeah I guess under that uh, under that age we're going to be unlikely to be out of that real risk for mortality so you know I personally would prefer to wait mark sorry slightly lighter um with their mums just because I think stress when you're still in that real risk period of weight gain um, could really put animals back enough that it's going to increase mortality. Um, but yeah, probably need to look a bit further into some research around that. But yeah, I I guess it's, yeah, the argument I sort of had about just pushing them through to that 45% standard reference weight. And then I wouldn't want to be marking lambs once they get over that weight. So I think realistically, you probably, you know, you can mark any time between from two weeks onwards. So I think, you know, if you have to mark earlier, um, potentially, but yeah, again, if you're really stuck in a horrible situation and you've got ewes really struggling, then sometimes I think this year we're going to have to do things that we wouldn't normally do. Thanks, Deb. I want to extend my thanks to Penny Keynes for co-hosting the webinar um, with me tonight. Um, I'd like to thank you guys all for joining today's webinar. I would like to extend my thanks to Deb for sharing your insight and expertise. If you've got other questions, you can contact me directly using the contact information on your webinar registration and we'll um, get those answered for you as soon as we can. Um, we thank you for your time and have a lovely evening. Good night and good luck with your weaning. Thank you. Thank you.